Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on the channel. Today we have a very cool thing. We're going to be working on UDIMs inside of Unreal Engine. So I'm going to be showing you how we can actually make Unreal work with UDIMs so that you can import as much resolution as you want. Of course, taking performance into account to get your nice renders out of the engine. But before we do that, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel. It allows me to keep doing this and sharing more tips, tricks, and techniques with you about the 3D world. Let's go to the video. Very well, my friends. So what we need to understand first is that this particular character that I'm about to show you was a character that it did, and it did not have UDIMs. So how can we convert something that has no UDIMs into something that has UDIMs so that it's easier to connect? If you haven't seen the UDIMs video, make sure to check that out so that you understand like the whole process about what they are. We're going to take a look at those inside of Unreal today, but it's important that you understand the concept. So if we go here inside of Maya, you're going to see that I divided this character into four pieces. The armor group right here, the metal bits of the armor, the general like body body frame that he has is just like a carbon fiber like mesh and then this right here which is the visor every single one of these elements has a different UV map right so if I select this one that's the UV map for that one that's the UV map for that one that's the UV map for that one don't judge me I did this like 10 years ago so uh, I definitely have learned a lot in the past couple of years so what we need to do first is we need to transfer or convert these textures from a traditional like texture set process which is what we have here instead of substance right where we can isolate every single part of the character and make them into a specific UDIM approach. So what I'm going to do is the following. First, I want the armor group to be the first UDIM. So I'm not going to do anything to that one. I want the next metal bits, which are this ones right here, to be the second UDIM. So I need to go to UVs, UV editor, grab all of the UV shells right here. I'm going to go to transform, click on the pivot so it's right there on the center, and on the move options, set this to one and push them one side to the left. So now, as you can see, this live in the zero two space, right? Like this is zero one and this is zero two or one zero zero one, one zero zero two. These are the UDIM spaces that we're going to be using. I'm going to do the same thing now with the body. I'm going to go to the body, go to the UV editor, grab all of these guys right here, and then push them two times. So they now live on the third space right there of my UDIM sets. Finally, I'm going to grab the visor, go to UV again, grab the UV shell, and push this three times so that it's on the four UV space. Now, if I take a look at the whole robot and I go to the UV editor, you're going to see that we have four UDIMs. These are four 4K UDIMs. So this is technically like if I was using one 8K texture for the whole character. Now, again, when I did this back in the day, I actually wasted a lot of space. You can see that there's a lot of like uh, double spaces here for the armor bits. Like, for instance, here on the armor, there's a lot of faces on the back. Normally, for a game character, you wouldn't do this. You wouldn't leave all of these like empty spaces. So it's important to, to keep that into account. But in this case, again, it's, it's going to look nice. Now that we have this, we do need to do something with the texture. So if I go here to my folder and I go to my source images, I have my Uden folder right here. And this is what we got, right? So we got base color, normal map, occlusion, roughness, metallic, uh, base color, a mist normal map, occlusion, roughness, metallic, and we have all of the different ones, mesh armor, mesh black mat, and mesh body. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change, and I'm going to change this to name of the texture, dot, the actual texture, right? So the normal map, so the an ambient occlusion, so the texture map, then 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, dot, and then in this case, these, these are JPEGs, right? This part right here, my friends, this is the UDIM information. This is super, super important. It needs to be before the final like configuration or, or file uh, data type that you're using. And since we have four UDIMs and they're one after the other, we're going to have 1001, 1002, 1003, and 1004. I'm just going to do the base color here for you guys. So I'm just going to rename this. The name of this part was Echo 13. So it's going to be Echo 13 dot. You could even use underscores, color, albedo, underscore, 1001 shape. We said that the body or the armor, the, uh, the black armor, which is this one right here, is going to be the next one. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that the name is exactly the same, but with 1002. That little flag right there is what's going to tell our software that we are going to use this particular aspect. And let me show you how to do this in Maya. In order to test that this UDIM configuration is working properly, I'm just going to grab every single element right here. I'm just going to sign a new material. Let's just uh, grab a basic Lambert material. And this is going to be M underscore Echo 13. So this is going to be my main material. I'm going to go here to color, file, navigate, of course, to where those are. And we're going to select the first one, echo 13, color underscore 001, and hit open. There we go. If I press number six now, we're sharing the same color across all of the UV tiles because Maya doesn't know that this is supposed to be a UDIM element. The only thing we need to do is change this UV tiling mode to UDIM. And when we do that, as you can see, it should say, hey, four tiles were found because it found that little flag that I explained about, and we just generate the preview. And boom. There we go. Of course, this is not going to look great just yet because this is just the diffuse color of the of the character, but it should tell you, hey, this is working. Your flags are working properly. And as you can see, we found this UDIM flag so that it knows that it's a UDIM texture. 
let me do that with all of the other textures and let's jump into Unreal Engine. I have all of my names properly set up over here and now we're ready to jump into Unreal. I'm going to jump into this file right here. And as you can see, we have a very simple scene. This is just a presentation scene with a, an infinite background and a couple of lights to just make something look cool. I'm going to go here into my contents and I'm going to create a new folder. I call this Echo 13 and let's bring in our mesh. Of course, one thing that's very important is we need to export this new mesh that we have right here. So I'm going to say file, export selection, and I'm going to say robot A, because this new mesh is the one that has the new UDEMs that we calibrated. We just drag and drop this into Unreal, hit import, and there we go. Now, as you can see, it splits it into all of the different parts. No problem. We can just grab all of this guys right here, drop him there into the middle of the background, and there we go. Our character is ready here inside of Unreal. But of course, we have a problem. And the problem is that this thing is not reading the UDEMs, even though it has the UDEMs. So how do we change this? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to go to edit, we need to go to project settings, and we need to look for an option called virtual textures. So if we go here to virtual textures, you're going to see that we need to enable this virtual texture support. This is a specific thing about Unreal. To be honest, I know Unreal. I know how to do all of the stuff with it, but I don't know all of the intricacies of the programming behind all of these things. What I do know is that virtual textures are a way for Unreal to manage all of this information and make it a lot more, you know, easy on the performance side of things. Most of the big projects that I've seen in the last couple of years, especially AAA games, will use some sort of virtual texturing sort of like workflow to make sure that they can bring in all of the amazing textures that we see. But you might not be using this all the time for instance when we do vr stuff we usually don't use virtual textures because it's very heavy it can be a little bit heavy on performance okay so i'm gonna click on this thing and i'm gonna say restart now this is very important when we use virtual textures the whole engine needs to sort of like rewrite itself so that it knows how to work properly with this new sort of like method that we're going to be using so let's just give it a go unfortunately you are going to have to recompile the shaders so this will take a little bit longer usually depends on your computer right but it can take up to 5 10 20 minutes what i recommend if you're going to start an unreal engine project enable them as soon as you create your project you create your project you know you're going to be using UDEMs for virtual textures just enable them so that it does the configuration or the processing for all of the base basic shaders and that way anytime you build up a new shader or a new element it's already going to be working with virtual textures because if you wait until the very end of the project to do that it's going to take a long time to compile everything and there we go the compilation of all of the shaders is now complete and as you can see everything should look pretty much the same you're not going to see any difference to be honest but now we can change some of the things that we have here with the textures so this is what i'm going to do so i'm going to delete the main color and as you can see we lose any of the textures for our character and now we're going to go to the UDEM folder that we have right here and if i drag and drop my first texture it should give me this look at that a vt right there so it knows that this is a virtual texture. If I double click on it, now I'm gonna be able to see all of the different colors right here. This is the sort of like magical thing about virtual textures, the fact that they now adapt to this new UDEM workflow and it's very simple. The only thing we need to do, drag and drop this here into our little material. And if you did this when you were a kid, circle with circle, there we go. That's not it. We need to bring in a couple more. So we're gonna bring in, of course, our emissive channel, which is also a virtual texture. Okay, that's one, that one's going to be important. Our normal map and our occlusion roughness metallic. I name it ORM because it's a lot easier. And as you can see, this is the big advantage or one of the big advantages of the UDEM workflow. The fact that instead of having 16 different textures, right? Because we had four textures for each of the four parts of the element. We're only going to have four textures for all of the different elements. We got into a little bit of a debate, not debate, but a little bit of a discussion of, on which of these things is better for a performance or from a performance standpoint. And it really depends on what you're going for. In terms of draw calls, which is how many times the engine sort of like draws an object, this is better because it only needs to do one draw call because it's only one material holding all of the textures. But in terms of texture size, right, VRAM that we're using to load in all of these textures, this is definitely a little bit bigger because we need to load in all of the textures at the same time instead of streaming them individually. So it really depends. And unless you're going to go really deep into like the optimization of your engine, this is something that usually the optimization and the programmers take care of when doing a project. Now, this one's going to be important. The ORM material, we've talked about this one before. Remember that it has four different things, right? So on the red channel, we have the ambient occlusion like that on the green channel we have the roughness and on the blue channel we have the metalness so combined we get this very sort of like weird looking maps the important thing is we do need to remove the srgb option right here because we don't want to have any sort of like color correction or color like changes on the textures so that they read exactly as they did on substance page now we just drag this in right there there we go red is ambient occlusion green is roughness and blue is metallic save 
and there we go our textures are good to go you can see all of the reflections there on the metal of the character on the visor right like everything is working exactly as we would have expected and we are working with our UDEM workflow the last one that we're missing is, of course, the emissive. Now, the emissive is, a, is an interesting case because the emissive, even though we need to give it the proper naming convention, right? So this texture is named emissive underscore 1002. It doesn't have all of the other ones. So it should know that it needs to go to the second slot of our armor in this case. So this one goes into emissive color. It's gonna look a little bit weird there. Let's just make sure that it looks proper here. No, it's not looking proper. So what can we do to fix it? So the problem that we have is that this doesn't know, Unreal doesn't know that this texture is only supposed to be on UDIM number two, 1002. And it's trying to place it on the first slot that it sees, right? 1001. That's why we're seeing it here in, on top of the armor. Now, unfortunately, the ways that we can fix this are a little bit weird. So the first way is just go to paint, create a one by one pixel image that's going to be black and you create one as 001, 003 and 004. That way we're going to have four images, even though one's going to be super, super, super small and he's going to find the proper stack for the elements. If you don't want to have any issues, that's probably the easiest one that you can do. But if you want to solve it here inside of the engine, there's actually a very easy way to do it that requires a little bit of math. The first thing we need is a texture coordinate node. This is the node that is working behind the scenes and telling Unreal where it needs to map the textures. And we're going to split this. We want to see the U and the V as separate elements, and we're going to be using a component mask. So the component mask is a way to extract the R right there and the U or the B component mask here. It's going to be the G. So R, red and G, green, they represent the U and the V channel of our element. And we know from our UDEMs that the emissive texture lives one tile ahead right? Like it lives in 1002. So what we need to do is push this R element, the U element to that specific option. We're going to be using a subtract node. Why a subtract node if we actually want to add? Because for whatever reason, Unreal works on a sort of like opposite direction. So it uses or sees UDEMs in an inverse fashion. Again, don't ask me why. That's more of a programming set of things. But if we just take this value right here from our UVs and subtract one, which as you can see, it's already set here in constant V, what we're telling is move this thing one space to the left which in this case, it would be one space to the right, which is what we need for our particular texture. Now we need to rejoin this by using an append vector node, which is just going to take the value of A, which in this case is U, and the value of G, which in this case is V, right? U, V, R, G, and it's going to allow us to push this into the UV maps, right? We hit save and over here, you're going to see that now our element is looking exactly as what we want with the UVs exactly where it needs them to be. All of the glowy bits on the nice metal chromatic elements that we have right there. So that's it, my friends. This is pretty much the setup that you're going to need for any UDEMs that you're going to be doing. And believe me, if you have a strong computer, if you have enough graphics cards and enough processing power and everything, you're going to be able to push this quite, quite a bit. Now, again, keep in mind, the more UDEMs you use, the more texture you use, the more performance heavy this thing is going to become. But if you want to have a specific hero asset or maybe you want to do some shots for your demo reel or for your portfolio and you don't want to set this up inside of Maya or Marmoset or any of the other softwares, there you go. Unreal is completely free and you can get a very, very nice result as well here for your character. That's pretty much for this one, my friends. Remember, you still need to have clean UVs, clean UDIMs, and all of the other elements. Of course, a clean texturing process. So make sure to check some of our other videos where we cover those topics. Thank you, as always, for being part of this community. And if there's a specific question that you have about this process or any other process, please let me know down here in the comments, and I'll be happy to make a video about that. Don't forget, always learning, always improving. I'll see you back on the next one, my friends.